Good morning everybody. Today we're going to start on installing our water tanks that we received over the weekend. I've got one of them already placed in. I'll show you that. Okay, so this is the black water tank that's in at the moment. I've just got it connected via these ratchet straps to give me an idea of how we're going to get it in. So I've been racking my brain over the last three or four days to work out how I'm going to do it and today I, or yesterday I think I've worked out how I'm going to do it. I'm going to mount onto this main beam that goes all the way down the bus and in between that main beam and this beam here there's a 40 mil gap between here and here. I've got myself a bit of 40 mil tubing which I'm going to cut to 600 which will take me to nearly the edge of the bus. I'm going to bolt it down here, going to bolt it to the edge over there and also on these two lips just here. I'm going to put three lots of support so I'm going to put another one here which will squeeze in between here, there's 40 mil gap here. Same over here I'm going to bolt it to that and then same down the end going to squeeze the 40 mil tubing into here bolt it over there which should secure it then I'm going to run threaded um, rod down either side and then underneath I'm going to use the metal tube again and drill through the threaded rod to come up and hold that up well that's the plan anyway so we'll see how it goes um, that tank's about 145 litres, the black tank, and then I've got the other two tanks out the back which I'll show you when I go out the back. So I'm just going to take some measurements and then we're going to start cutting the steel tubing that I've got and see how we go. Alright, so I'll get back to you with some updates during the day. Here is the other two tanks. This is my fresh water. It's about 200 litres. Over here is the grey water tank. If you're after some tanks, award tanks is the guy to go and see. Go and give hands a ring and he'll look after you. Good morning all. Today we're getting stuck into finishing, well not finishing, but continuing on getting our water tanks ready to install. So I'll show you the stuff that I'm using to do it. We've got 40 by 40 by 1.6 mil um, galvanized steel square tubing. So I've cut them down to size and I've painted them black with rust guard. I've drilled the holes so I've got a hole for bolting into the chassis and then the hole for the threaded rod. Same on the other side. From there I've got a 10 mil stainless steel threaded rod which is going to go up through the metal tubing as such. It's going to have a nylon lock thread on the top, a uh, nut on the top, and then it's going to have a, another nut underneath, which I'm going to lock tight. And it's going to be the same on the other side, so it'll be hanging down as such. The tank's going to sit in between here and here, and then at the bottom, I've got another piece to go across the bottom. I've also got some foam to go inside the threaded rod, so just go in as such, like that, and then when it's like that hanging down, this will protect the water tank from um, rubbing against this threaded rod, so that'll keep it nice and safe, um, so we shouldn't get any holes in our water tank. I've also I'm using stainless steel um, nuts and bolts. These are M10 and 100 mil for locking the the tubing into the chassis. Also using the the M10 bolts as well. Ah, oh, sorry, nuts. So that's doing that. I've also got washers which are going to go on top of the the tubing and below the tubing. Um, just to take some bit of the pressure off the nuts as well. So I've got them. I've got some Loctite um, thread locker. So 
So I'm going to put that on all the nuts to make sure that they don't um, I can't even think of the word. They don't um, come loose. I can't blank. Joys are getting old. So that's for that one. Now the other thing I've got, I've got this foam self-adhere roll. Now this is going to go along the the, the galvanised steel tubing uh, where it'll uh, touch the water tank so it doesn't rub. Um, now this is self-adhesing. Now it's probably not the best self-adhesing stuff that's out there but when it's combined with being tied against the water tank it should hold enough. I'll probably actually put some I don't know, something like liquid nails or something maybe just on on each side of it just to keep it in place as well. So I've got that for around the chimney. I've also got on the bigger roll which is um, 100, 750 mil wide by 10 mil thick. Now I'm going to cut this to size to go around the bottom of the tank also the sides of the tank and also the top of the tank. Sorry, not the sides, the end of the tanks and the top of the tank. Um, so one roll should do my black water tank and it's not very expensive. This stuff was 17 bucks from from Buddy, so that's all right. And the other, this foam roll was I think six bucks or seven bucks from Bunnings as well. And then the last thing I'm gonna do um, is I've got some leftover plywood sheeting which I'm going to cut the same size as the bottom of the um, tanks and I'm going to cover that in bitumen waterproof um, paint and I'm going to lay that on the bottom of the, the tank as well so that'll give it just a bit more protection so I mean it's sitting up high it's not sitting low so it shouldn't get damaged but uh, instead of having to put some steel which is a little bit more expensive or some sort of galvanized sheeting I've just gone this way. If, it, if I need to change it, I will, but at the moment we'll go with that. This is the metal tubing that I'm cutting. I've measured it up there. So I'm getting two bits out of the one meter length, so which is good. Works out well. It's pretty sturdy stuff. This is the last bit I've got to cut for the black water. And then I can start installing and see how it goes. And if it works on the black water, I'll then do it for the grey water and the fresh water as well. So fingers crossed that um, it works out the way I hope it does. Okay, so I've cut the metal tubing and I've got it placed how I want it to go. As you can see, it's in between the, those two bits of the frame there. I've measured in to the middle of the main beam for the bus so I'm going to drill through there and put a bolt nut in there and then I'm going to go through here and then down into the steel beam down the bottom there and put a nut and bolt on that which should keep it nice and firm if I need to I can also screw down through here which I may do anyway and then from there I'll be able to put my threaded rod down either side and I've got got this beam here which will sit underneath and the threaded rod will go up there and then it'll lift it up and pull it tight. That's the plan. So if this one works then I can do the other two which I've already cut. Okay, here's a quick update. I've been able to get the brackets across for the bracing. I've screwed down through there, bracings across, and that's in there, but of course the bolt I got wasn't long enough, so I've got to go back to Bunnings and get some longer bolts. But all up, I think it's going to work fine. We've got that one as well. This one here was a little bit harder getting down into the channel here. It was really tight, but and drilling down through there was a bit tough too, so but I got down there. There was some 
wires down below so I have to be careful about that and I'll once I'm sure everything's right I'll rust guard it back up I'll paint the the um, tubing and I've got lock tight to put on everything all right back in the bus and I got under the bus yesterday afternoon to check how these would look with the tank there and realized and it wasn't until I got under the tank that I saw that there was two outlet points one for the drainage that came across where the where the where this support I had down the bottom over on the left hand side here down the bottom was an, the outlet for the black tank and that's where my threaded rod would have come right in the middle so I've had to move it back this way and this one here was back here I had to move it this way because the inlet for the black tank was coming right across here so do yourself a favor once you um, get it ready make sure you look underneath because it was covered by the supports and I didn't see it so silly me I mean meant I just had to move it up so another half hour's work but not too bad so that's sorted all right so yesterday I was able to get in one of the cross members as you can see though it's sticking out from the van a little bit so what I'm going to do today over here I'm going to cut off a bit of this one here on the edge so it'll move across a bit and also cut off a bit off here so it'll fit a bit behind this lip of the van and that'll also um, allow me to push the, the tank across just a little bit so I've got a bit more room because the outlet is on this side now is on here which I've been able to miss now with my threaded rod because I moved it across a touch and then I'll work on these other two for this tank that will be the black water tank done and I'll know what I'm doing for the other two tanks Now I've got this cut and also the other side. It's now not sitting out. It's still a little bit lower than what I was hoping, but that's okay. It's still up pretty high. Okay, just a quick update. As you can see, I've put the foam rubber on top and surprisingly, it's stuck really well. So I don't think I'm gonna to have to use um, any liquid nails or anything like that. So I've done it on the top, down the bottom, and at the ends on either side. 
So that's how it'll look when the sitting within the chassis itself. Of course, this part will be right down against the foam and there'll be the connection around the bottom of it. So, quite happy with that. I'm going to go out and connect these cross members now to the chassis and let it dry overnight for the um, lock tight and then tomorrow I can put this on. Okay, so I've cut up the beams that are going across to hold the tank in. Now I've got to work out where I'm putting them. Now, silly me, when I ordered the tanks, I didn't account for these um, outlets on the side of the van because that that is supposed to be turned around facing the outside. What was happening is, or what's happening is, those outlets are coming right on this lip here and I don't think there's enough room to allow me to connect a elbow for the plumbing to come out. So lucky enough on the fresh water and the grey water they're all on one side so, and they're all the same size or the tanks are the same dimensions on each tank so I can flip them the other way so they're facing inwards which means I don't have any problems because there's clearance in between here now the other problem is <laughs> they're right in the middle so I've got to put the bracket sitting right in the middle here so when the thread rod hangs down it's not going to hang down and interfere with connecting to these outlets. So that's what I'm doing now, just making sure I've got them in the right place. Then I'm going to screw or drill through on each of them. And there's another one up here. And then I can start fixing it together. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then I'll do the same with the freshwater tank on the other side. Okay, so this is why you check everything before you start drilling. If I had have drilled where my first was going to be, I've got this fuse box and I can't put a screw under there. So I've had to move it across the tap and there's nothing under here. The next issue I have is this one down the end where I had it there. Once again, there's a beam here and I can't get a screw underneath there. Then the last problem I have, I don't know whether I'll be able to show you this but I'll try. Under the beam is these two uh, connectors so when I drill I've just got to be really careful to make sure I come across here and not drill through these. And that's the same here on this one in the centre exactly the same problem is there's those so make sure you check underneath to make sure you don't drill it through anything important um, so I'm glad I double checked everything before I went and drilled good morning all back on the bus today I'm trying to get in the freshwater tank and I've screwed up now when I measured for the tank I measured from the this down so that's what I took the measurement for the tank I completely forgot about the 40 mil for the square tubing and I need that square tubing in there because that's the size between the two beams inside there so it's not going to be a big drama because I have got some space it's not lower than the suspension or the diff at the back and it's just a little bit higher than the exhaust pipe or the muffler there so I've still got room so it's okay but if I put 40mm 
tubing under here it's going to put it down a fair bit more so what I'm going to have to do is I'm thinking I'm either going to have to get a flat piece of steel to put across there or um, some 30 mil tubing to go underneath for the support so I think I'll go the tubing but I might go a thick bit of steel I'll I'll have to go to Bunnings but of course we're in lockdown at the moment in Brisbane or we can't get out till tomorrow so I'll have to wait till tomorrow so it's a bit of a bugger but the joys of COVID and the joys of not thinking ahead when you're measuring up so make sure you take into account your any of your um, bracketing that you're going to use before you measure your tanks of course silly Andrew did not do that good morning all Today I'm going to continue working with the water tanks. I've done all the bracketing, I've um, painted it all, um, measured the threaded rod and cut that all. So it's all ready to go. Um, the problem I've got now is I've just got to make sure that where I've put the threaded rod um, and the nut on top fits under the little um, railings that are along the chassis. So I'll show you what I mean and then I'll get stuck into cutting them. These nuts here that are on top of the bracketing have got to fit under here on either side. Now some of the sides are okay and others they're knocking here. So I've got to cut away this bit of section here so that the nut can fit in here which will then allow us to put the rod under I mean the bracket under there so I've got to do at least four and then I'll check how we go after that Alright, so an update for you. Um, I've got all the brackets in uh, for the freshwater tank. So as you can see now, the brackets in. That's where I had to cut the part out so the nut could fit in. Um, if we have a look, that it is there. And over here, it's connected there. And then the threading is down beneath and I'll go under and show you that there's four of them for the fresh water now it's a 200 litre fresh water so four's probably overkill but better to have enough than not a, not enough so there's the four and let's go underneath and show you down there okay so underneath you can see I've got the brackets going across they're as sturdy as anything they won't move at all the threaded rods coming down so I've got four of them just across there I've also had to put some on the water tanks I've had to put some foam along here just to guard it from hitting here I don't think it will but I've got it guarded anyway, same with all these ones along here. We should be alright, but better to be safe than sorry. Now they're hanging down a little bit. Uh, once I've got the tank up and screwed on, I'll um, angle grind off the excess so it's not hanging down as far. Um, it should be probably somewhere up around here, I'd say. Anyway. I'm going to get the tank now and put it in, so we'll see how we go. An update for the afternoon. The tank is in, as you can see. There it is there. And you can see the little bit that it's coming out underneath. Getting the tank in was interesting. Now, you've got to keep this on the hush-hush. Don't tell Carolyn, because I'll get in trouble. But when I was sliding the tank in, I couldn't get it in with these parts that were hanging down and the ramp <laughs> so I couldn't 
get the tank in because it's 2.1 meters long. So what I had to do is I had to get the trolley jack, which is all the way up there, and some um, just some supports there, and I stuck it under there and lifted this up a little bit um, so I could finally get it under. But as you can see, it's supported now, bracketed. I haven't got those um, nuts locked tied in yet or nylon thread because I may have to pull out the tank again hopefully not but if I I hopefully don't and I can just put the lock nuts on and then um, take these back to up here because I've got, still got to put in some sensors but as you can see I can get to this side of the tank so I should be fine and I actually can get on the other side of it too underneath so I'm hoping I won't need to do it but I'm just gonna leave it that way for the time being till I got the two tanks in and then I get the sensors and then I'll see how I go I'll show you inside there's the tank there. there's the inlet and breather so I've got enough room for that and down the bottom is the outlets for it. So a drainage and for the water system. But she's sitting in there nicely now. Nice and tight. I can stand on there. And I'm, I'm not the lightest of guys, so it takes my weight no problem at all. So that's one done. Just the uh, grey water to go, and we're done with the tanks. Woohoo! G'day all. Well, I finally finished. I've got all the tanks in. So this is a, the grey water tank. As you can see, I've got a little bit of uh, threaded rod still sticking out, which I'll cut off once I've got the, the painted uh, waterproof plywood underneath it. And then I can put it back with the black water tank. I've got that in. But I think I'm going to replace these bars with the same that I've got on the fresh water and the grey water because it, it just shows too much and it's still got to have the bar underneath as well but it's all secured in there now and for the fresh water now this drops a little bit lower here but it's okay um, once again I've got to cut down the threaded rod but as you can see, it's in behind the grill now. Uh, and it all looks pretty cool. Uh, they're all done. Mm -hmm. 